Hi everyone, this is Ted Bauman here with your Friday Bauman Daily video. Uh, today I want to talk about gold. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't know that in the past I used to write primarily about personal finances and wealth protection, and as a result, I gained a lot of insight into how gold can play a role in your portfolio. I've had a few people write in recently and say, Ted, should we be holding gold in our portfolio? Uh, and in fact, I've mentioned it a couple of times in the past. Uh, but today I want to go into a bit of a deeper dive um, to clarify what gold can do for you in your portfolio and what it can't do. Uh, let's start out by looking at the gold price. And here's a chart that shows the gold price uh, in constant or rather uh, in a current US dollars going back to uh, about 1970, I believe. Now, uh, one of the things to understand about gold is that up until about that point, uh, you couldn't really buy and sell gold uh, freely in the United States. It was something that was reserved for the federal government uh, under the terms of the Bretton Woods Agreement. Uh, it's kind of a complicated thing. Bottom line was uh, the United States agreed to peg the dollar to the price of gold and the dollar would be the base currency for uh, global markets. Then uh, uh, Richard Nixon decided in the early 1970s to end that arrangement and uh, that allowed the gold price to fluctuate. Now, as you can see, there was a brief spike in the price of gold uh, around 1980, and that was a result of the tremendous uh, rise in interest rates uh, that effectively drove up the value of the dollar. Uh, and that was to try to whip inflation uh, coming out of the 1970s. So for the first couple of years of the 80s, we saw a lot of inflation and the gold price rose as a result. But then, as you see, after that, it really carried on for a long, long time uh, with uh, a relatively stable uh, price point. Uh, even in, in constant dollar terms, it hovered at around $250 to $300 an ounce, uh, sometimes a little higher, but mainly uh, that was the case. Then uh, starting at around 2007, uh, 2008, the dollar began to rise in price. Now that was uh, partly a result of the strength of the dollar. Now it's important to understand that the gold price does respond to uh, or does move with the price of the dollar uh, because the price of gold, the underlying price of gold tends to be fairly stable. So if the dollar strengthens relative to other currencies, if it takes more dollars to buy other currencies, the gold price tends to rise. Now, a real spike in the price of gold came with the 2008 and 2009 financial crisis. As you can see, it reached a high point of uh, around $1,800 an ounce uh, and tested that twice before falling fairly significantly in uh, around 2012. Uh, and then since then, it, it's kind of moved in a band between around uh, $1,100 an ounce and about $1,300 an ounce. But recently, the price of gold has risen again. Now, the reason I point this out to you is because, as you can see, the price of gold in current dollar terms, the price uh, unadjusted for inflation, uh, has risen considerably over the last uh, decade or so. But let's have a look at the price of gold in inflation-adjusted terms. In other words, if you take a particular year, in this case 1980, and then you adjust all the prices to remain the same for that uh, 1980 currency value. Well, here's what you get. You see that the price of gold spiked uh, in the early 1970s in inflation-adjusted terms. In other words, the real underlying price of gold at around $5,000. That was due to the Arab oil embargo and the oil crisis. Then at the beginning of the 1980s, the price spiked uh, in real U.S. dollar terms <clears throat> or rather um, inflation adjusted terms because of, again, that massive increase in interest rates that we saw uh, as uh, Chairman Volcker of the Federal Reserve tried to bring inflation under control. Um, then it kind of bounced up and down for uh, the rest of the decade. Then it uh, began a long, slow slide until about 2000 when it leveled out. And again, as you can see, the inflation adjusted price of gold in, in 1980 US dollars did rise again, uh, again for the same reasons that I described earlier. Uh, the financial crisis, people were looking for a safe haven uh, and the price uh, went up. But as you can see now, um, if you continue to use the uh, 2000, rather 1980 
dollar as the benchmark, as the inflation-adjusted currency, right now, uh, the uh, gold price is actually below where it was in 1970. Now, why is this important to you? Well, I think the main thing is that it, is, it, it, it needs to remind us that gold is not a hedge against the normal movements of the economy. It's not a hedge against inflation. The gold price will rise with inflation because the price of gold uh, over long periods tends to be fairly stable. It does peak, and I'll explain why in a minute, <clears throat> but generally speaking, it tends to revert back to a fairly stable price over long periods of time. So uh, if there's a lot of inflation and the value of uh, the, the dollar declines because of, it takes more dollars to buy the same amount of goods, the price of gold will rise accordingly. Now, that's a good thing in the sense that it will help you to maintain um, a, a store of assets that is not going to be affected by inflation. If you buy a bar of gold, let's say you buy $1,000 worth of gold uh, and inflation kicks in, that $1,000 that you paid for it can't buy $1,000 worth of goods anymore. Maybe it's halved in price. But as the price of goods fall by 50%, the price of your gold is going to double, um, which will maintain your purchasing power. Now, that's a good thing about gold. It's a hedge against inflation. But inflation is the least of our worries right now, I promise you. Uh, that's a, a story for another day. But the bottom line is that I don't see inflation uh, being a driver for the price of gold. Uh, so what is driving the price of gold in nominal terms, in current dollar terms, up in recent years? In fact, in recent weeks, it's hit a, it's hit a, a peak. Well, I think the main thing is that people buy gold uh, over the short term as a hedge against crisis. Uh, people buy gold and, and the price of gold in, in real dollar terms, in other words, in inflation-adjusted terms, does fluctuate over time in response to people's perceptions of a crisis in the economy whether that's the U.S. economy or the global economy. Now, when there is a crisis, um, people tend to buy gold uh, in order to protect themselves against the decline in the value of other assets like stocks and bonds uh, and real estate and things like that. And that increased demand for a limited supply of gold drives the price up. But that, in turn, leads gold miners to produce more gold, which eventually drives the price back down to its long-term average. Now, this is the lesson uh, that I want to uh, impart about holding gold. Gold is an important thing to hold in your portfolio because it acts as a stabilizer. Um, it will maintain its value over long periods of time. It's not an asset that's going to appreciate. You're not going to earn more money over the long term by holding gold. But by the same token, you're not going to lose money. You're not going to lose money to inflation. And you're not going to lose money to crises like the coronavirus or war or a blow up in the global oil markets or something like that. So the reason to hold gold is to protect yourself against uh, fluctuations that are caused by external events. It's not a way to make new money, at least not in the long term. Now you can make money in gold over the short term by speculating or buying uh, in anticipation of a short term rise in the price of gold, um, but that is not the primary reason to keep gold in one's portfolio. Now, let me explain why. Well, first of all, about 50% of global gold production uh, is used for jewelry. Uh, the biggest single uh, source of demand for, the, for gold for that purpose is in India. People in India traditionally love uh, to wear gold jewelry. It's uh, considered an important part of the culture. And as a result, um, about 50% of global gold production every year goes to, the, goes to the jewelry market. Another 40% goes to the holdings of central banks, uh, and the, of private banks, and other sorts of uh, major institutions. Now, that only leaves 10% of the gold uh, on the spot market trading hands uh, between people like you and I. So the question is, uh, if there's a crisis, um, that 10% is what's going to react to the sudden uh, demand for gold as a safe haven. Uh, and that is going to allow the price of gold to rise in real terms in short bursts in response to a crisis. But the thing to remember is that it's going to fall back down again. Just as we saw it fall back down again after the 2008-09 financial crisis, starting in 2012, the price of gold collapsed because people realized that the crisis was over, and or at least the, the, the short-term part of the crisis was over. And so people started um, selling their gold and reconverting it back into stocks, which were rising rapidly.
So the message is that if you're going to buy gold as part of a portfolio, in other words, something that, that you hold for the long term, say 5% of your portfolio or 10% if you're uh, retired, for example, it's a stabilizer. It's a safe haven. It's something that's going to maintain value. So if everything else fails, you've still got that 10% of your portfolio in gold. Now, what about the different ways that you can hold gold? Well, my favorite way of holding it is actually in physical gold itself. Uh, it, uh, it has the advantage of being very secure. Uh, it doesn't um, cost much to buy. <clears throat> you can sometimes have to pay slight markups when you buy them from retail gold dealers. But generally speaking, um, it's a safe and effective way to buy gold. Uh, many people keep gold in a, in a home safe. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The only downside is that it's not always easy to convert gold back into money when the time comes. Under normal circumstances, sure it is. Uh, but obviously, if there was a real crisis, if things really fell apart, uh, it could be difficult to convert gold back into money. Uh, I don't think that's a major consideration, but it's something to think about. The other alternative is to buy gold through exchange-traded funds. There's a couple of them, GLD, GLDM, are two uh, funds that uh, currently allow you to access or own gold. But remember, uh, in that case, you, what you were owning is a claim on the gold holdings of companies that own the ETFs. Um, you're not... Uh, have, you don't have a direct ownership of specific pieces of gold. Now, that really doesn't matter uh, in short term, um, but in the long term, uh, it is possible for those companies to have financial problems and you could end up losing the ability to cash in uh, your ETF shares or you could get a price that is below the actual price of physical gold. So for convenience sake, and particularly for short term, uh, speculation on gold ETFs are the way to go. Uh, for long term, Owning physical gold is uh, my preference. Now, what about owning gold mining stocks? Uh, my colleague, Matt Barriali, is an expert in miners, and uh, he will tell you that uh, the, the critical thing about mining stocks is that they are not always correlated with the gold price. Just because the gold price goes up doesn't mean that miners are going to end up uh, doing better. It depends on how the, co the company is positioned to extract the ore that it has control over, uh, in response to the rising price of gold. Some companies can respond very quickly and produce more gold with very low overheads and their share prices go up when the gold price goes up. Other companies, on the other hand, uh, that are mining difficult deep veins of ore like those companies in South Africa where I'm from, uh, they often uh, don't rise as quickly because it takes a lot of time and effort to increase uh, production capacity in response to the, the rise in the price of gold. So their prices don't always go up in the same way that gold prices do. On the other hand, some mining companies, when they first discover a new source of gold and gear up to, uh, to exploit it, their prices can rise very rapidly as they begin to gear up to produce gold. But that's a different kettle of fish. That is not something you're doing as part of a portfolio plan. Buying gold miners like that is a way of playing the market like you play any other company or stock to try to make money in the short term. Now, there are other options. You can buy shares in the companies that provide uh, the cash flow, the financing to gold miners. There's a whole setup where you can buy those shares in those companies and uh, ETFs that, that trade them because these companies lend money to miners in exchange for promises of future deliveries of gold. You can do that. But at the end of the day, if your goal is not just to try to uh, pinch a little bit of profit out of short-term movements in the gold price in response to geopolitical events, but to stabilize your portfolio, you can't do anything better than owning physical gold. Now, you don't have to just keep it yourself in your own safe. You can also keep it in a safety deposit box, or you could actually store gold uh, in repositories. There are many of them around the world. Uh, one that I've recommended in the past and continue to recommend is one called New Zealand Vault, based in Wellington, in that beautiful country. Uh, and what they'll do, if you like, is open up a vault for you, uh, without you having to go there, uh, they will buy gold on local markets there in New Zealand and store that gold for you without you ever having to visit the country. It's a little more expensive because you're paying for foreign storage and there are some transactions costs, uh, but it's a really, really safe way to own gold. There are other ways you can do that. There are banks in Europe that, we're that will store gold. Uh, there are banks in the United States that will store gold for you, um, but some people are concerned that when politics changes, maybe the government will confiscate gold. There was talk about that back at about a decade ago. Never happened, but people do worry sometimes. So remember, 
My message today is if you want to stabilize your portfolio, <clears throat> particularly if you're retired and want to maintain long-term value, uh, put about 10% of the value of your portfolio in physical gold. Uh, you can get them in very small denominations. You can get them in eighth ounces, 16th ounces, and so on. Uh, but the key thing is that physical gold is the one thing that is going to maintain its value over long periods of time um, and prevent you from losing everything if, for some reason, stocks do collapse. Now, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen, and the reason I'm talking about gold today is not because I'm worried about it, uh, but because some people have asked, and I think it is an important part of anybody's investment portfolio to own some gold. Um, I've written some reports in the Bauman letter. If you're a subscriber, you can find them in the uh, archive section about uh, New Zealand Vault, for example, <clears throat> and some other companies I've written about that store gold. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to the Bauman letter, toodle on over to our website and uh, see if it makes sense to subscribe. I have a lot of uh, particular uh, recommendations about not only where you can store gold, but under what kind of ownership structures, trusts, limited liability corporations, all sorts of ways you can protect, uh, protect yourself legally as well as your um, heirs and other people uh, from any kind of legal threats in addition to storing gold. Anyway, this is Ted Baum, and uh, make sure you check out the other YouTube videos here on this channel. I've got a whole bunch of them, uh, including some on competition policy in the United States uh, and a, a variety of other topics. So make sure you check out those videos. And again, uh, if you're interested in the Baum letter, please uh, go and have a look at our website and consider subscribing. Until next week, this is Ted Bauman signing off. I'll see you there.